see the young master is going to be right popular here among the folks of New Rochelle. He's giving a party his very first night. And old Castleton never gave one in 25 years. Hey, Linda, is the coast clear? I want to get a peek at myself in this soup and fish before that mob gets a flash. Hey, uh, little one, now, uh, don't you string me. Do I look like I belong? Belong to what, sir? Do I look the part, the soup and fish, the scenery, the scenery. Are you going to join them, sir? Yeah. Yeah, little one, just open the gate and renounce me. I'll pull a few old jokes on these roofs and I'll be the life of the dining room. And say, little one, make it strong now. <laughs> Mr. Kid Burns. So literate, so vulgar. Say Mary. You want me to say Mary? Mary. Will you give me a minute? I'd give you six months if I could. You're a reasonable girl, aren't you, Mary? Reasonable, yes. Twenty dollars a month. You're going to apologize for calling me a snake, aren't you, Mary? Yes, the first time I meet a snake. You gave notice, I heard, Mary. I notice you heard. Mary, before you go, won't you shake this old hand? It's been so long, Mary, so long. That's right. So long. Well, I have never. This is ridiculous, Mother. outrageous, disgraceful. Mother. Mother, something said. It seems that Mother objects to Mr. Burns occupying a place at the banquet table. The very idea of having a hired man mingle with the invited guests. Keep him among the servants where he belongs. The kid? I wouldn't hurt the kid's feelings for anything in the world. Why, he stuck to me when I didn't have a dollar to my name. He's my friend, my pal. Very well. Flora, go to your room. What? Oh, but, but think of the guests. You should have thought of them before. But I, I'll explain to the kid. He'll be willing to get him out of there. And when you have apologized for your insult, we may possibly return and join your friends. Go, Flora. Will you go in there and tell Mr. Burns I want to see him? I say, Bernard, what's the difficulty? Well, Mrs. Dean objects to Burns being at the table. Well, I'll get him out. Will you run upstairs and see if you can't induce those two women to return? Leave it to me. I know women like a book. That's the reason I'm a bachelor. Hey, do you want to see me, Tom? Something wrong? No. Well, that is nothing wrong, kid. Well, the fact is... Well, I'm ashamed to tell you. Well, did I make some crack out of place? Now, don't be afraid to tell me, Tom, because I'm trying awful hard to be a gentleman. On the square, I am. You, uh... You won't feel hurt if I ask you to do something for me, will you? Do something for you? Why, I'd go the route for you, Tom. Now, slip me the news. What is it? Well, I'm going to ask you to, to, to stay out here. Yeah? And... Uh, Some of Mr. Bennett's invited guests haven't arrived yet. And he wants to know if you won't stay out here and receive them, that's all. Is that all? Well, say, what's the matter with you? Why, I'd be tickled to death to be the receiver. And say, uh, ask that guy to save me a piece of pie, will you, Tom? <laughs> oh, say, you're a little princess. That's what you are. Uh... <laughs> ah! oh! You brute! You miserable hussy! Oh. Mother, what in the world has oh, happened? My child, my child, my child. Will you child. please let me explain? <laughs> this miserable man making, making love to that servant girl. Ah! Yes, ah! darling, yes, yes. Ah! Cry, ah! cry to your heart's content. Mother is with you. Oh. oh, Mary, don't cry. It's not your fault. It's my fault. No, it's not either. It's her fault. That old iron-jawed caterpillar. What are you going to do now? Mr. Bennett, go upstairs, explain. Tell them it was all a mistake. Explain? No, there'll be no explanations. Why should I humor a couple of whining, unreasonable females? I'm going to be the fellow around here from now on. Good boy. I'll wear the trousers in this establishment. Tom Bennett? Tom Bennett! Well, what do you want? I want you to come up here at once. Mother! Mother! All right, I'll be right up. Where's Mr. Bennett? 
Hi, and Mr. Bennett? Uh, my name is Cronin. I was invited here tonight and then insulted by this monkey of a man. Hey, come on outside uh, a moment. Bennett, do you want to talk with this thief? Thief, take your hand away from there. I'll bet you $50 you haven't got a gun. <laughs> I want you to go upstairs and be so flawed. Tell her that you'll try to be a better boy in the future. Mm. Oh. Okay, get the six. Who turned that thing on? <gasps> Dan Cronin. My dear Mrs. Dean. I asked you as a favor not to come here tonight. Then you get me the combination for the safe spot. You heard me. Your secrets and mine are in there. And I must get them out tonight. Hush, man. Are you going to dog me for the rest of my life? Get it for me and you'll never see me again. Never. 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 It was nothing but a pretty argument, my dear. <laughs> yes, everything is all right now, and we're as happy as a lot of birdies in a nest. <laughs> my dear child. Mother. Eric, you ought to be congratulated. You've won a beautiful prize in the matrimonial game. Oh. Well, good night to you all. Good, good night, night, Mr. Dan. Oh, skidoo. How dare you? Such disrespect. Oh, skidoo to you, too. Oh, Tom Bennett, did you hear what this beggar called me? Kid, I'm surprised at you. Well, you needn't be. You can be the goat if you want to, but I'm going to declare myself. You invited a lot of people to a banquet here tonight, and you didn't spend two minutes with them. You let her win every bet she made and put the whole thing on the bomb. Discharge him at once. You needn't do that. I'll discharge myself. I'm going to slip right back to Broadway where I belong, you old talking machine. Ooh, Flora, did you hear what he called your mother? Come with me. Going up. Tom. I'm going to grab a train in the morning, but before I go, I want you to understand that I'm going to leave everything just like I found it. Even the butler suit that Mr. Castleton gave him before he died. Then no matter what turns up, I ain't got nothing to do with it. What do you mean? Suppose you marry this girl, and then a few days later, somebody turns up with a will, and you find yourself without 30 cents in your kit. You think she'll stick? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Why, this girl is marrying you for your money, and you're letting her get away with it. That's enough. You pack your duds and get out of here in the morning. Yes, sir. Now, remember, I, uh, I never want to see you again. No, pal. All right. Do you need any money? No, I ain't got nothing coming to me, and I ain't going to be staked. That's just the kind of a guy I am. And that's the kind of a guy I'm always going to be. Mary, how would you like to fall in with a millionaire? I wouldn't mind if I had on a bathing suit. Would you give any of your money to the poor? Oh, yes, I take care of all my relatives. How long did you work for Mr. Castleton? Fifteen hours a day. Fifteen hours a day. Uh, did he die suddenly? Yes. He was only alive two days before he died. Then he went on short notice. Yes. He didn't even give me the usual two weeks. What did the physician say he had? Over a million. You know, some people in town thought everything would be left to you. Everything was left to me. I have to tend to it all by myself. Mary, suppose a will was found. Don't you think it'd be a surprise to everybody in New Rochelle if a thing like that ever happened? It would be a surprise to anybody in New Rochelle if anything ever happened. I'm going away tomorrow, Mary. So am I. Where are you going? To New York. So am I. What train? Ten o'clock. So am I. See you at the depot? Sure, Pop. That's right. My dad would never preach to me. In fact, he'd never teach to me the different things that I should do when I'd be here or there. In fact, he said, go on alone. You have ideas of your own. You'll never lose if you will use the others fair and square. That's just as far as he'd advise. Until one day, to my surprise, I went to say that I was going to other lands to live. 
And as I went to say goodbye, he saw a teardrop in my eye. Said he, my lad, ah, that's too bad. I've some advice to give her. Always leave them laughing when you say goodbye. Never linger long about her, else you'll wear your welcome out. When you meet a fella with a tear dim eye, you can leave him laughing if you try. When he tells his troubles, interrupt him with a joke. Tell him one he's never heard, and he'll declare that it's a bird. When he's giggling good, you know, that's the time to turn and go. So always leave him laughing when you say goodbye. When you meet a fella with a tear dim eye, you can leave him laughing if you try. Now, why, when he tells his troubles, he'll interrupt him with a joke. Tell him one he's never heard. He'll declare that it's a bird. When he's giggling good, you know. Well, that's the time to turn and go. So always leave him laughing. Just always leave him laughing. They always leave him laughing when you say. a strenuous day for Mary. I'll sleep soundly this night. I wonder if Mr. Burns really will take that 10 o'clock train. Thank mm -hmm. you. 